This video is about finding similar examples. The video uses the data to similarity and similarity to data operators to find distances between examples within a single example set. This is often useful when you're exploring data to get a sense of the data you have, perhaps to see outliers, or maybe just in general to understand the shape of the data. Another motivation to find similarities is to find the closest example, perhaps in one example set, to examples in another example set, in effect performing a fuzzy match rather than an exact match. In this case, the cross distances operator is used. So what we'll do is we'll cover the following topics. We'll first of all look at some data that we're going to use. Then we'll look at the data to similarity operator, what it does and how to visualize and understand what it produces. Then we'll look at the similarity to data operator, what it does and how to interpret the example set it produces. And then finally, we'll look at the cross distances operator and how to interpret what it produces so that you can determine the closest example in one set to another. So let's start by looking at some data. So I've simply used the Iris data set and what I've done is I've selected only the regular attributes, which if you may remember, A1 to A4. And then what I've done is I've regenerated an ID as a numerical value. Now the reason I've done this is to make the plotting work better. So this is a mini gotcha. Just be aware that if you use nominal IDs, it can sometimes be tricky to get the sort order you want. So by having a numerical ID, it makes the plotting work better. So this is simply what's happening here. And then I'm multiplying it to have two versions of that Iris data set. Then I'm also then generating some data using the generate data by user specification operator. In this situation, I'm just again creating four attributes, A1 to A4. I'm just setting some arbitrary values here. And I've also created an ID attribute that I've set to the value query. So it shows up later. And of course I have to set ID to be of row ID. So let's set a breakpoint to just look at that data so we understand what's going on. So here's the Iris data set. No label, just deleted it. And the ID goes from one up to 150. And there are the various attributes. This is just a copy of it. And then here's the single example that we're going to use to find within the larger 150 example example set. So now first thing we're going to do is data to similarity. Now, this operator takes an example set just a single example set and it requires you to choose a distance measure so I'm going to choose the Euclidean distance but be aware there are many possible values and different types here cosine similarity all sorts but I'm going to use Euclidean but be aware that others are other distance functions are available so if I set a breakpoint on this and run it we can look at the output now, this makes what's known as a similarity measure object. It looks a bit like an example set. And all it's doing is it's comparing each example with each of the other examples in the example set. And it's representing those pairings by this first and second attribute. So these are the IDs of the pairs. And this is the distance the Euclidean distance in this case. And we can convince ourselves that that's right. If we look at ID1 and ID2, Euclidean distance, what you do is you do the difference here squared plus the difference there squared between A2 and A2, then the distance there squared and the distance there squared. Let's just do that manually. So it's 0.2 squared which I'll store in the memory, and 0.5 squared, and then naught squared, and naught squared is naught naught. If I recall the memory now, and square root that, 
we should get 0 0.538516 and I think that's the same as there. It is indeed. So you can convince yourself it's correctly done that calculation for Euclidean distance for each pair. And there are 11,175 examples in here, or pairings. And basically what's happening is it's, it's picked the one, first 140 for ID 1. So there they are. That's the first 140. It doesn't compare itself with itself because that would be of distance 0. And then for ID 2, it doesn't bother repeating 2 to 1. And so essentially it's n times n minus 1 over 2 pairs, 11,175. And that's all very nice. And it's a bit like an example set. So you can do this. You can sort by distance. You can see the closest and furthest away and that sort of thing. Now, because it's a similarity measure object, there are certain graphs here that appear. Let's look at this one here called, helpfully, graph. Now, this is a way of visualizing each of the examples. Now, you can choose different types of graph here, and you can label the points, and you can label the edges. And I tend to use this one just to, just to explain what's going on, and you can choose how many points how many edges you want to show. So think of this as a disco for teenagers and they're all around the edges of this discotheque. And it's the early, early, early in the evening and they're not dancing. And you can, by doing this, you can essentially get them to come to the dance floor. Now, ironically, it's the wrong way round. As you increase the number of edges, you're actually increasing the ones you're showing more edges which are furthest distances away, which is not at all like a discotheque where you would expect the ones that were most attracted to one another to dance first. This is actually showing the ones that are least attracted or the furthest distance away. And you can see that if I zoom right in, and let's change this actually to a low number and change to I som so we can actually see something. Here we go. If I zoom in, you can see that between 0.41 and 0.119, the distance is 5.6. We go back to the data. You can see that this this basically is is the furthest one of the furthest distances. So which is interesting, it's not quite the way around you expect. You rather expect the closest points to be shown. Uh, but nonetheless, you could, I guess, use this to see outliers and, and again, get an understanding of the shape of your data. So let's continue. Let's look at the histogram view here. So this shows for all of the, in this case, 11,175 points. It's showing a histogram view of the distances and it's showing that there are a significant number of points that are around one distance apart and there's a, a smaller peak at about 3.75 I take this to mean that given what I know about the iris data set there are three labels so I, I get this intuitive feels like there are three clusters and two of the clusters come here and one comes here but unfortunately we can't do anything other to this histogram to change the colors and so on so it's a you know it's a nice sort of overview, but as we'll see in a minute, there's an alternative way of uh, representing this using example set, which helps and get, get there a bit quicker. Um, and then the final one is k distances. And the way to explain k distances is to start with k equals two, which is the nearest neighbour. So it's essentially the second closest point where k is one is itself. If you set k to be two, then what this graph shows is the distance from a given point to its nearest neighbour. And you can see there are five points which are zero distance from a nearest neighbour. If we look at the data, we can convince ourselves how that, where that's coming from. So we can see where it's come from. If I sort by distance here, these are the pairs of examples that are zero distance apart. And if we count the number of unique IDs here, there's one, two, three, four, five. There are five unique IDs here. K distance is sure enough there are five here. Go back to the data for point one. We can convince ourselves there are 
one, two, three, four, five, six, eight unique IDs here. Sure enough, eight points there. So this gives a sense as what the nearest neighbor plot. If I put this to 150, this is the furthest neighbor, if such a concept exists. And you can see it ranges between 3.5 and 7. So in other words, there's no points beyond 7 distance units away. And, and I suppose this is the, what's it, the nearest furthest neighbor is 3.5 units away. Um, tricky to explain. Anyway, um, the K distances plot, again, it gives you a sense as to the density of the data, and it's actually used, you can use it for the DB scan clustering operator. That operator requires two points, min points, which is, say, five is typically small value you choose, and then you have to choose another thing called epsilon, which is some sort of measure of the density. And what you do is you use the K distances plot, and you look for a kink in it, and here's one perhaps at about 0.5. So this gives you a starting point, doesn't by any means give you an answer, it gives you a starting point for min points 5 and epsilon about 0.5, and that will hopefully get the DB scan operator a sort of a good start to see what clusters it produces. Okay, now let's look at the similarity to data operator. So I'll set a breakpoint there. And this operator creates an example set. And you'll notice it has 22,350 examples. It's essentially double the previous one. So what it means is that each pair is represented twice. So 1 and 2 had a distance of 0.53. If I scroll down far enough, we'll find 2 and 1. Whereas in the similarity object, there it is. So it's, it's double counted, which is fine. It means that you can start to do more interesting things like, for example, this. This is a scatter plot where I'm plotting first ID and second ID, and I'm colouring in based on distance. And that's actually why I set the ID to be a numerical value, because it means you can control this ordering here. And you can see it gives you a sense as to what's happening in this example set. And now we know the Iris data set, it contains 50 examples of a, in order for a specific label, then another 50 for another label, and then a final 50 for a third label. And you can see what this is showing, because the color blue means that they're closer, that all of the examples that are labeled the same are closer to one another than they are to examples that are labeled differently. And you can see along the diagonal, it basically confirms that labeled points are similar to one another, and they're dissimilar to other points. Anyway, very interesting. Um, but again, what this is useful for, I guess, is to show the shape of your data. But of course, we've had to, we knew a little bit about this data beforehand. We knew it was sorted by label. That wouldn't necessarily be true in, in general. But nonetheless, it's quite nice to visualize and get a shape out of this. You can also obviously look at the histogram. So it's the same shape as before but this time you have a bit more control and with a bit more gymnastics you can for example join the original data back to it and start plotting different shapes for different classes okay so finally let's go back to the process now we're going to do cross distances Now the cross distances operator takes two example sets. It labels them request and reference. Again, it needs a distance measure. I'm just going to pick Euclidean distance. It also has top K and compute similarities. I'm not going to use them. I'll briefly explain what they do. So top K, this means only care about the top, in this case, 10 nearest, or you can do the 10 furthest. This is helpful, it makes the calculation a lot quicker. I think it also saves a bit of memory, probably. You can also do compute similarities. This has the effect of negating the the output, the value that's output of the distance, which I guess means you can sort it in a different way around. So sorting a negative number means that the minimum is bigger than the maximum. Anyway, I'm not going to use that. I'm not going to use top K. The output from the cross distances operator is an example set. Let's just run it and show that. 
So sure enough, there's the output from the cross distances operator, which is an example set, and it contains 150 examples. And all that's happened is that each input request ID has been matched with the document, which is the, the reference ID, and there was only one in that, just to refresh our memories. Here are the 150 in the original Iris data set. Here's the one we're looking for. This is the result of the combination, and here's the distance. And so it sorts it, I guess, automatically. So it's basically showing that number 73 is the closest to my document that I'm looking interested in, the query I'm interested in. Let's convince ourselves of the truth of that. If I scroll down to number 73, here it is. And if we move things around suitably, we can convince ourselves that those are quite close. So there's 0.1 difference there. So 0.1 squared plus 0.1 squared plus 0.1 squared plus 0.2 squared. Square root, I think, would give you the value 0.264. OK. So essentially what's happened here is that the cross distances operator has found the closest point, closest example in one example set to um, examples in another. Now I've obviously limited it just one in this case to show how it works but of course you don't have to you can have whatever example sets you want in here you could of course duplicate one and have identical example sets in which case you'd recreate the data to similarity operator here or well, the output from that one actually. All very good. So let's just sum up then what we've done. So what we've shown in this video is we've had some simple data. We've used data to similarity to see how similar the examples are to one another in the in the single example set. And there's an, IO, an object there called the similarity measure object, which shows um, furthest points rather than the nearest. So converting that back to an example set is perhaps one way to get around that, which is what the similarity data operator does. And that this cross distances operator essentially lets you compare two example sets to see how they relate to one another. So obviously for fun, let's just run this one more time and look at the nice picture of the similarity to data output, which is this one here plotted using a scatter diagram. How lovely.